Okay, boys and girls. It's not long after the last episode. It's December 6th up there. 3.7 million going to training and youth facilities, which is great. But will it take too much money out of our budget to where they won't build the stadium? I'm not sure. Let's roll the intro. All right, welcome in. It's episode 150. Thanks for being here. If you've watched all of the episodes since 150, I want to see a comment from you to say, like, I've been here. I've been here. 150 episodes. I literally can't believe I have a series of 150 episodes long. That is a first. This is the first time I've built a stadium. <laughs> Assuming they don't cancel it, which I'm nervous about. So this, 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 this dovetails straight into our conversation about spending money during the transfer window and i'm leaning towards not spending any because this is what happened last time they're like yeah we'll buy the stadium or i, I think that i think it was buying the stadium and then like we didn't have enough money for it so the fact that like we're in the planning okay now this is bumped out to 2031 that's changed like it literally it, i mean did the date change or did they just, or is this the same day? It did say the third, the 20, uh, 2030, but because this is now actually started, I'm, I'm, I know they've given me a transfer budget of 18 million euros, but I'm, I'm afraid like if we go spend a million that comes right off the, you know, I mean, not immediately, right? Like transfers, blah, blah, blah. But like, I'm afraid to go spend money because they're going to go, Mm, yeah, we can't. We, we, you know, in the planning phase, we decided we couldn't buy a stadium, so that changes things. Like, I'm good with spending the wage budget. Like, I'm totally good with that, but I'm nervous about those things. Here's where we're at, right? Like, so Ethan Galbraith, I'm just going to let, I'm gonna let leave. I think, I think, it depends on what else is out there. Like, he is our fifth best midfielder. He can play the DM in a bind, but he's the fifth best DM, and he's the fifth best attacking midfielder, and he doesn't enjoy big matches, and he's an inconsistent performer. He's a leading player. Somebody else can go have him. You know, he's injured, whatever. Same thing applies to Di Benedetto. He was complaining about playing time, which I don't really blame him. He's fairly professional, but, like, he's not been blowing it out of the water. You know, like, you could argue we haven't given him a, enough of a chance, but... You know, we've given him essentially 10, 9, and 10 starts in league play, and he's averaged, he hasn't averaged better than a 6.96. And he's 2.4K a week, which, like, according to our wage budget, it was like, ah, oh, we got all, but he's not really going to improve, I don't feel. So I kind of go, like, okay, if we let those two guys go, we've got um, Joseph Eros, who I'm not saying is as good, but. But he's 19, and if we give him a chance to take those 10 starts and 10 subs that like D. Benedetto had, does that give him an opportunity to improve? I'm not saying he's a like for like replacement, but we also have Sean Murphy. Where's Sean? 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 Did I start Sean recently? Oh, there it is. There it is. And he's he's got the potential. He needs games. So he had five and five this season on a six nine five. So essentially, if we if we just swap him in. And he takes those starts, and then we have the guy come back off of a loan. I think we're okay. The only other one that I would really consider, the Jed Spence, we're just going to let walk. J Jack Thompson, we're going to let walk. Nobody, I've tried selling these guys. Nobody wants them. Gavin Wilkinson, this one hurts. Oh, his concentration went up. Just a fuzz. He's still a four, though. We're going to let walk. Um, I, I, For the betterment of his career, which I'm worried about because the fans have a great affinity towards him, but like... He's a backup player. He's 27. He scored 12 goals for Waterford. Hey, you, you go score 12 goals for Waterford. You know, like, make them better. That's fine. We've got too many other options. Matt Capper isn't going to make it as a right back. He's not done well in the first division, so we're going to say goodbye. Tom Caffrey, we're going to let Galway, if they want him, they can pick him up. That's fine. I just, 
he's not improved. He's he's had 28 games. Again, I know they don't have the best training facilities, but like, dude, it's the first division, right? Like, I feel like he he's been given a fair a fair shake. Mallow Elaine is not getting playing time. We may recall him and try and reloan him. Um, he's still got a ch- he's 26 though, right? Like, I don't know if he's really going to improve. Um, and he's on contract, so he, it, it, he's not even somebody we really technically have to worry about. But we may just reloan or recall and then reloan him. Uh, somewhere else hopefully that we have loaded so he can get an actual playing time uh, because he's on a first team contract they're not using him yay but i can't talk to the manager because they don't exist um so the only other one in this whole list right like all these guys we're gonna let walk we've got i think good enough replacements in the midfield to to essentially bring those young guys in and say like here you go enjoy and then Potty O'Connor is the only other one, and I'm not sure what to do. He is currently our fifth. Let's go to the defending. Yep, still. Anybody else? John Mackey. Yep, yep. Fifth tactical. Okay. Right, so Martin Ford. Everybody thinks he's fifth, okay? Um, who was who the guy? We, why was he giving feedback? That's interesting. Because it's like when you look at a star rating, is this according to Derek? Or no, uh, same starting, two and a half stars. Is that according to Derek? Because he was the only one that goes in, was giving him two and a half stars. But it's like, hold on, I just want to check something. So Martin is my assistant. What does Martin say? Three stars. So it must be, is it consensus thinking he's two and a half stars? Okay, he thinks he's... The goalkeeping coach thinks he's fourth. Derek Gary thinks he's fifth, and that's his star rating. So I'm, that's what I'm going with. And it's not that he's bad. It's that he's 31 and he's going on 32. He'll be 32 in the middle of the season next season. And he's fifth. And we have Sean, Frank, Ricky McPherson, Patrick, who's the 17 or 18 now. Is he 18? He's 17. Is better than him. Daryl Devine needs more more experience and it is improving and he's 17 so i feel like patrick's already better and, um, and you know he got 17 starts not as many towards the end of the season even with all the the running he was like hey i need more playing time but i feel like if we if we essentially say all right potty's gone and put patrick in we got four center backs frank can cover left back but we got four center backs Regan mcpherson's on first team sean flynn is on rotation and apparently, according to Derek, is our best center back. Guess we should probably play him more. That's another reason. Patrick is a hot prospect, quite good. And then Daryl Devine. I think we have enough guys. And I hate that. I hate. I. I don't like. I don't. It doesn't feel good. This is not. We're not going to sell him. Um, he doesn't have staff attributes, so we can't do that. Like I think he can do a job for somebody, but I think for the betterment of the squad. And he's a leading player. He's a core group. Ugh, it hurts. But I think even though he's not expensive, we go like, or, mate, peace out. Like, go make somebody better. Like, so th- I know we're trying to build the, build the nation, and I feel like this is part of that in terms of, like, we're not even going to sell him. We're just going to – all these players are going to be like, hey, we got money. Enjoy. Like, somebody pick them up, and we hope that it's a premier division team that can get into the Europa League – you know, and, and like qualify, right? So like we're trying to help out that way because he's still a pretty good one. But I think for the betterment of Sean Flynn, who's on rotation, Patrick and Daryl, who are hot prospects, giving them essentially the combination of those three getting his starts, I think makes sense. So aside from that, right? Like if you look in the score, we've got, we got a competition, I think, heating up between Anthony Dempsey. He's continuing to improve. And Daniel. I don't think Daniel's going to lose his job, but he has not been super impressive. And I mean, I know that's harsh, right? 7.0 in the Champions League, whatever. And we played the group stage and blah, blah, blah. 25 starts, 6.99. Like, he's been okay, right? Like, I don't want to just get rid. If we can find an amazing keeper, I I would get rid and just loan him out to somebody else in the league. But I don't feel like we need to replace him because I think Anthony, if we give Anthony another year or two and we give him some more starts here, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna he's gonna take the job. 
right? Like we ain't, I'm not saying we're going to split the time, but we may give Anthony more of a shot. We will give Anthony more of a shot next season. So we don't need to go spend money there. We've got Andrew Doolin and Nick Robinson. You know, Andrew's on three grand a week. Nick Robinson's 20, they're the same age, but you know, he's improving. Um, you could argue, hey, you should loan him out to go get him starts, but we need the rotation. We literally don't have any other right backs. So that's a no. We got Dean Doyle with Frank and Paul Gibson, who what? Paul's got what? Torn hamstring is out for three months. I don't even know if I showed you that, but yeah, that happened. Um, so that's crushed his bravery, but he's 19. He can bounce back. He He's going to get, you know, he got 12 starts, three subs. So we're doing okay there. Um, we got Jason Byrne, Harry White, Paul Russell, John Smith. If we get rid of Galbraith, Thompson, and D. Benedetto, let's go down. Um, Sean Murphy, the other, we already covered the midfielders. Now, you could argue right wing, we've got Witty and Stephen Coleman. He's got potential. He needs more, he needs more time. Right? We've got we've gotten him under 19 appearances and he's doing okay. We're trying to like rotate him in. We could use another like a left winger, but we also just go like, okay, we'll just play two up top. You know, like whatever. We got Tony, Gary Hayes Ward, Aaron Brennan with the broken uh ankle, Kelvin Bello, Mallow Lane on the loan, and Christov Demov, obviously. Bello, I can't remember. We have not extended his loan. I think, I'm like, do we offer to do that? He didn't really improve, but he got 14 goals. So it's kind of like, again, do we sacrifice him a little bit to say, hey, you're doing a job for Sligo, who, who finished fourth. Now, unfortunately, because we lost to Waterford, that's kind of gutting. We lost to Waterford in the, in the cup, so Sligo doesn't get that last Europa League spot, which is unfortunate. Um, but do we, do we, I mean, he's a one every two kind of guy for them. Do we let him stay there and hope he improves? I really think your concentration should have gone up by now. Like you get 30 starts, like concentrate more. Um, again, Mallow, uh, do we just, I think we're going to recall him and loan him back out, but like we have enough options in the attacking third, whether it's playing a four, two, three, one or some variation where we take a winger off, we bring a striker on, or we play the, the, the diamond with the two strike. Like we can get those guys enough starts. And I don't feel like we desperately need to reinforce. So I'm tempted to just let those guys go, bring Mallow back, have this guy, uh, Joseph come back off of loan and have Kelvin reloan probably and just like go again and and with the with the eye of like we don't want to go spend a bunch of money right this very second i would like to get some sort of and again you may look at this and go like hey because it's saying whatever then they're good and they're going to keep going like i just want to like get some sort i want to get out of the planning phase which may take 2 years i don't know I'd like to get some sort of progress going to where they're committed. We've spent the 20 million or whatever it is on the stadium. And then I'll feel better about going out and spending money. Now, if we can get players on free or really cheap, you know, from a, from a, a transfer cost or something like that, we'll do that. Maybe we could loan some players. I'm not saying no. I just think from a squad standpoint, aside from finding a lights out goalkeeper, which I think we could have one in the making, we're not desperate. Like our star ratings are good. That's just how I, so I'm going to go th keep pushing on into the window. I just wanted to, uh, this popped up and I was like, yay. Oh no. <laughs> right. Like, oh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I don't even remember what's going to be. It's going to be done in July. So they've already spent the money. We're going to get some of that again. Um, whatever coefficient money from the champions league, whatever, but that won't happen until like June or July anyway. So I kind of want to like stay below the radar from the spending standpoint and see where we end up. And again, you could argue, well, you could sell some of these players and, and, you know, boost your finances, but like, we've not been able to, I have tried. So let's keep going. Yay. World cup group stage draw. We are seated second for the draw. My friends. Oh, I forgot. It always does the... I'm like, wait, why is it filling in the groups? Why Why don't these? Because... Okay, so it does the teams on the... The, like, third and fourth seeds first. 
Okay, so is this a spot? I can. I think this is a spot. So let's go ahead. We're not at risk at just like throwing ourselves out there. Okay, now I think we could pop into the equation. We'd like to avoid group three. Sweden's pretty good. Maybe avoid Austria and Scotland. They've been pretty good. Let's go find out. Austria. Okay. I'm not going to click the last one because we know who it is. Croatia. So we've avoided England. Important. Of the options, okay, we avoided France and Germany, Italy, 15th, they're quite good. Austria is 47th, not as good as I was thinking, they've, they've dropped off a bit. Macedonia and the Faroe Islands, hearkening back to last year's series. Um, but we could have gotten Belgium 13th, Denmark 22nd would have been nice, Germany's first, Italy is 5th. Romania is 16th. Portugal is 3rd. France is like 8th, yep. Yeah. And then Turkey is 38th. Oh, that would have been the dream. Oh, no, that's... They're, they're, that, they're getting Holland. Sorry, they're 12th. So, of the options, Denmark is a little better, but they have Greece and Sweden in their group, so I would say I... Okay, now, is this... are we, yeah, because you drop the results, and the, I have to remember how this works. So we could get a second-place team slot, or if we somehow pull something off against Croatia and we smash all the other teams, maybe. But based on our recent results in the Nations League, not feeling actually superb about that, but okay. No, I did not forget, maybe a little bit, about the end-of-season awards. Let's go ahead and do that. So if you, if you haven't you know, in your head, at least decided who you thought the best player, best young player, best signing was. You might do that right now or pause, because I'm going to go three, two, one, click. Here we go. Um, into the overall best love in squad, with Gary Gleason, and then Gennaro as a substitute, and Matthew Witte taking the right wing spot, my friends. So, it's kind of what the best 11 looks like. Still got Jordan Davies holding down the left back, which is surprising. Patty O'Connor, or Potty O'Connor. Erich, they're on the wrong side. Get it right, guys. Spence is still there. Hattery freaking White. Paul Russell. Gleason, Hayesward, Thompson, and Woody. So a lot of them still currently here. Boston, where's he at? He's still with Osterlund's FK. He's not needed. Ooh, 24 conceded and 18 with five clean sheets on a 6.36. Thanks for buying him from us. Um, All right. Best level more are they now? Blah, blah, blah. Six are now retired. The rest continue to be involved in football, right? That, yeah. Matt, Marty Waters still with the club. Oh, he's he's actually improved, I think. I wish you could see, like, the improvement. I want to say he started off pretty, pretty bad in the scouting department. But I could be wrong. But 14, 9, and 8 is pretty good. I think I think he's improved. Somebody's going to go, like, yeah, I looked it up. I watched the episode, you know, when he first became one. And, yes, he's improved. And, again, I'm impressed. Um... Right. Dominic Bernard is still playing. He's with Shelburne. And he's on a 6-7-2. What a legend. I mean, good for him. He, he had a little bit of a run with us, you know. Interesting. All right, and in season awards. Gary freaking Hayes Ward with a 47. Harry White with a 24. Frank Edich on an 18. A little surprised Tony Byrne didn't get that. Uh, like, at least into the conversation, Right. He's the signing of the season, which I suppose makes sense, because when you look at the options, backup right back, backup keeper, you know, had as many... Did he have as many goals? How many goals did he have? 18? 18 in league, 6... Eight, I think almost as many, if not more, than Hayes Ward. Anyway, makes sense. You know, starting, holding uh, midfielder, you know, hot prospect center back, goalkeeper we loaned out because we were in a panic... You know, rotational striker and uh, a midfielder we bought for the future, then it really comes down to essentially like Tony Byrne and Jason Byrne, the Byrne playoffs. Um, but I, I think you can argue if you count all the goals, right? 28 goals, 14 of them in major competitions that we care about. 
or 14, 24 of them in major competitions we care about, like the Champions League, then yeah, that probably makes sense. And so, you know, they, they even it out and say, you know, okay, you didn't get the, the fans player of the season. That goes to Gary, right? Okay, so he had 25 in the competitions we care about, care deeply about, 29 goals. So he had one more than Tony Byrne. Um, and so they, they, they kind of trade that off. We're not gonna, every time the goal of the season is terrible, we're not going to do that. Season review, blah, 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 blah. Okay, there's not el- much else to show you here. So I'm going to hop us forward. I'm well into the future. We're about, we're to the first international break in March. Let's do it. Boom, here we are. Top of the table with a game in hand, equal on points, better goal differential. We've not been smashing people. It's only four games, though. So, like, you know, you know. Let me pull up my spreadsheet of lists. I'm pulled over here on this monitor that you cannot see. You can't see my other monitor, I suppose. You can see what's on it. Anyway, lots of things to go over with you. Um, Hayes Ward with the 22 league goals that we showed you there is a Cabo, not league record. Um, previous league record was eight, or previous Cabo record was 18 by Gary Hayes Ward. He's breaking his own records. Witty. Setting the assist record with 20. The previous high was 15. Again, for the club. Um, we signed Owen Heary. Maybe some of you know him. He's actually the... Uh, currently, I think, the Shelbourne manager was previously Bohemian and a player and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, our under-19 manager was poached. And actually, our under-19 assistant manager was also poached, which is lovely. Shows we got good things going on at the club, right? Model professional, though. 20 motivating. So I'm hoping we get some good... And not as good working with youngsters. Not as great. But, you know, he's kind of kind of rebuilding the career, I guess. He took a year off. Maybe two... No, year... All... Yeah. It's towards the end of 2028 now, wasn't it? Yeah, so essentially took like two years off, you know? Getting away from the game. And he's like, I gotta get back in. So we're well, then back in for 375 a week. Um... Yeah, Norwich hired our under-19 assistant as a full-on assistant, which I think is quite impressive. I offered him a raise, and he was like, nah, Norwich, man. I was like, okay, fine. We paid out $2.4 million in dividends to shareholders and $1.6 million in tax. Um, here's where we sit right now. It's to $24.2 million. It's not deducted anything off of the – I mean, this – allegedly is progressing but it's still in the planning phase which makes you nervous so i feel like we got to make another run get another 15 million for the champions league and then like just wait just wait till like we break ground on something and then we then we're committed we've paid for or 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 put a deposit down or something um we'll we'll go through all this kind of stuff let's look here um ryan cassidy from watford got the irish player of the year tony Byrne um came in second also Toronto, we had two situations like this. Toronto FC wanted to, wanted to sign Tony Byrne, and it said on the thing he has zero interest in that. And then I was like, so no, obviously, because I would have said no anyway. And then they, uh, the agent comes to me, he's like, hey, Tony needs a raise because Toronto is interested. And I really, I wish there was an option to, other than sack agent, because the agent is like um, Dave Moran, who has like every player in Ireland. I really want to be like there to be an option besides, hey, you should sack your agent for like hey remember how tony said he didn't want to go there but that option doesn't exist so we gave him a huge race of course we did same thing happened with uh oh i'll get to it eventually uh dean doyle dean doyle same exact thing not toronto somebody else um that he wasn't interested in going to perfect um so new contract for tony Byrne. we reloaned bellow as a key player to sligo um aaron brennan got the irish like this is national team stuff when i when i say irish uh, irish under 21 player of the year tony Byrne second which i thought was a little surprising it must have been in the under 21s competitions aaron brennan is the irish young player of the year tony Byrne is second i'm sure aaron brennan's like can i get paid like i'm six foot seven monster man can i get paid like that guy um hayes ward is the league of ireland player of the year witty is in the ireland overall best 11 for the national team which is like what they must not have had very good wingers. I'm, I mean, I like Matthew Woody, but come on. Um, Limerick were the biggest overachievers. They actually survived. So congrats to Limerick. Um, I guess I could show you that. I'm trying not to show you the transfer screen just yet so you can listen to my voice. Um, but Finn Harps and Derry City going down 
down, my friends. Darius Hayes kind of done that. Well, okay, just the one time and bounced back. Finn Harps, yeah, they got they got their moment in the sun again. You know, once every decade or so. Um, but Limerick, congrats. They kind of mm, they've had a good run in real life, and then ooh, not so great. Bounced up, back down, bounced up. So can we keep them up this time by loaning Kelvin Bellow to them again? Um. They wanted to increase the assistant salaries, and I was like, nah, let's push for better youth recruitment. And they were like, well, and I said, like, wait, some, well, what are the options was? The response came back was like, we, we do want to go up against the bigger clubs. And I'm like, okay, all right. I like what you're talking about there. So that's underway. We've got professional contracts for Conway and Lawless. I'll show you them. Derek Conway, now 300 a week. I'm trying to get, I mean, to get him close to, Having a chance to reach that potential. I'm hoping next season to loan him out. I don't think we're going to use him. He'll, he'd have to really improve. His determination is dropping like a rock, which is great. Uh, James Lawless has still got five-star potential and is improving. So we're trying to get them. Hey, we want you training all the time. Um, we got a new deal for Paul Russell. We got our under-21 in Ireland group. Denmark, Cyprus, Kosovo, San Marino, Slovenia. Denmark is currently 22nd. We're 30th. Everybody's below that. Um, so... Got to get, get some good results there. In the, again, under 21s, I don't really control, but you know. Um, Steven Seddon, let me show you that. We've called him up. He's been l loaned out by West Ham to Nottingham Force, my friends, who are in League One. Sorry, Forest fans. Um, we have kept the pitch at 105 by 85, which is the wide setting because it allows your wingers to have an impact. And guess what? We have wingers that we like. Um, we have four of the top six potential goal scorers from like the odds makers for the year, including Kelvin Bellow on loan and someone we just signed. I can't remember if I showed him to you, yet, but I'll show you that in a second. And then Sean Flynn and Gary Gleason are number one and number two, respectively, for top player of the year odds. I think that's that's kind of surprising from Sean Flynn. I'll show you him. I think that's it. So now, my friends, let's go back to the transfers. Well, they're amazing. Um, right. Sean Sweeney, I think, right? Sean? Sean? Just Is it just Sean or is it Sean? Sweeney. We paid 25 whole grand for him from Glenavon, Glenavon, Northern Ireland. Um, he, his contract was up in June, June 29th or whatever, June 30th. So we could have gotten him on a free, but I think he's really good. And I was like, 25 grand. I know we talked at the end of last episode about not spending any money. So we don't like impact the bank balance negatively. But I think 25 grand was worth it to secure this guy. He's 18. He turns 19 in a month, uh, six weeks. Um, hot prospect still, so he won't mind if we play him below. But I mean, when you look at the report, he's our fourth best striker. Pretty good, my friends. Um, thought about loaning him out, but I think once again we get to like all the cups and <clears throat> the continental competitions and all that kind of stuff. We're gonna need rotation options, and that's gonna give him real experience. We do need to find a way to get him more than. I mean, obviously we're only four games, and he's got a sub with a goal and an assist. Eh, not bad. You, you could argue. Um, so I think he's a steal for twenty five grand. We've loaned out uh, Stephen Malloy to Athlone Town. He's not happy about it. We might actually have to recall him because I think this is related to his unhappiness about it. I was just trying to get you playing time, brother. Like that's all I was trying to do. That's all I'm saying. I mean, look at that face. That is not the face of a happy pan, uh, happy bunny. Um, and then Thor Erickson, who we already is leaving. I think he was making like four eight hundred a week with us. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame him. He, he, I, I'm, I'm just confused, I guess. Like, you know, he's a six, seven, nine in the Pepsi D then. So it's not like, like that's below us in quality. I just, I, he just confuses me a little bit. Gavin Wilkinson where the fizzles aren't as good as some of the other ones, but like, they're not as bad as Gavin's, but that's kind of disappointing. Um, speaking of that. Uh, no, that's not here. Where, where is that? Oh, 
the Jed Spence gone, Potty O'Connor, Jack Thompson, Gavin Wilkinson, D. Benedino, Matt Capper, Tom Caffrey, Anthony Gribben, Ethan Galbraith. Gutting the squad. I mean, not really, right? We talked about this last time. I'm not going to go into all the details. The board was not happy. You said the fans weren't happy about Potty O'Connor, but I think when you look at it this way, it's like he's 44, or a 44, right? Would have been our fifth best center back. I don't think it's that big of a loss. And I like him. I do like him. I, I was surprised no one's picked him up. Plymouth and St. Johnstone have been listed as major interest for quite some time, but nobody assigned him. So, And we let him go in the like right at the end of the year. So he was available in the January transfer window. Nobody picked him up. Jack Thompson, available on a free. Wilkinson. Oh, I was hoping. Okay, who is it? Cork City? You'd think Waterford would say, hey, you scored 12 goals for us last season? You'd think they would go after him. I thought that's what's going to happen. D. Benedetto, still available, 54. So, like, we, it's not like we've lost a lot of quality here. I'm just trying to see if anybody's been picked up. Looks like none of them. Oh! He goes on a youngster contract to Derry City down in, in the first division. Curious. He's not getting paid. Interesting. So, of all, that, of all the players that got picked up that we dropped, Anthony Gribben, who was a youth prospect that didn't work out, gets picked up. That is a bit of a shock to me, especially considering where I, I thought surely O'Connor and Wilkinson would get picked up. Bare minimum. And I think Galbraith, okay, Galbraith was coming off the injury, so I can understand why that might have taken a while. Um, let me just uh, like, oh, we lost this guy. He's making 675. I offered him like 800. He's making like 350 or 400 or something. Like doubled your wages. He's like, nah, I'm going to go to Norwich. I mean, don't blame him. Championship you know, like, cheers, mate. Um, and then we replaced him with Miroslav Schnasner. Schna Schnasner? I think that's it. Um, who has had a 11-year break from football. But apparently he's still a 14, 7, 8. He was the best available. And he's resolute, which I love. We're paying him 900 a week. We're paying him... Oh, he's, he's overpaid. But we'll see how it works out. We'll see how it works out. Question mark. No future transfers. That, that's what's going on. So here's what a squam looks like, my friends. Um, you'll notice there will be somebody who I cannot remember who it is in the comments who will be pleased that Gennato has got two league starts and a President of Ireland's Cup, which we won. Start. And Anthony Dempsey has got two per, uh, league starts and a, I think a senior cup start. I don't think we've played twice. We are we are we are blooding in the youngster. He's not taken over his spot just yet, but it's he's closing the gap, my friends. I like Janato. It's just he he's just kind of maxed his potential. I think would be my guess. I don't know that, but you know I can see. Maybe halfway through the year, or maybe when we get to the continental competitions, Gennaro becomes our like. Well, I'm not sure. One of them becomes the Champions League, the other one becomes the league goalkeeper, and then next year he's kind of the backup. Maybe I could see that happening. Um, Doolin and Robinson, who we all know and love, still here. McPherson, Erich, Flynn, and then scroll down a little bit. Patrick and Daryl, the young lads. Daryl's just up because there's a lot of fixture congestion going on here. Um, so it's he's it's not like he's expecting, but oh, we also have him getting mentored, and this is working. So I'm I'm happy with him staying up here, and we can just make him available for the under 19s. Uh, Dean Doyle with the new contract, making 1.3k a week. Dino is getting to the maximum of his capabilities, which makes me a little nervous. Like I really want the like the technicals have not improved as much as I would have liked. Um, so I'm not saying we're looking for a replacement. I'm not saying Paul Gibson is it because he got hurt. And he's not nearly as good. Um, but we, you know, once we've settled the stadium stuff, we'll, we'll start looking around. And then midfielders, Jason Byrne, Harry White, Paul Russell, Joseph Eros, John Smith, Sean Murphy. Those are the ones. Those are the ones. I'm getting good reports from the staff on Sean Murphy in terms of his capability. So we definitely are trying to play him, you know, bring him on the bench or against weaker opposition when we're away and it's fixture congestion. I tend to play the 4-4-2 diamond, plug him in as the ball winning midfielder or the defensive midfielder, depending on what we, who else is in the squad. Uh, Jason Byrne, first team, 
uh, Harry White. Uh, uh, sorry, on a key player, 1,400 still. Good until next season. I feel like Harry plays above. Maybe it's the vision or and the decisions. He plays above his attributes, I think, a lot of times. He's got seven one three in Champions League. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, let me show you Joseph. He's he, you know we we've given him two subs substitute appearances. Not enough to get a rating, but like throwing him out there at the end, working on training him up. Hot prospect. He's not expecting playing time. Um, Paul Russell, like I said, is up to two point one k. Got him a new contract. It was more of like he was coming, like he had a year left. I was like, let's go ahead and just just renew it now, like so I don't forget and someone else picks him up. Honestly, is what I was thinking. Uh, I, Stephen Coleman, right wing. I don't like this. I don't like man, like he's not playing right. Like he's only got one substitute appearance, and we've played him in some under nineteen stuff. But like, dude, that means you have a lot of time to train, and like you are not getting any better. And that is a tad concern. We might need. To, I don't know if I've got him in a mentoring group. We might need to do that to see if we can improve some of that stuff. Not much time left for him. I mean, he's, he's good until next season, but like that that uh, potential that that star is going to disappear. I think. Um, Gleason, Tony Byrne, we all know and love. Brennan on the bench, again was tempted to loan him out, but thought you know I, he's six foot seven, he's got eighteen jumping guy. I like having that around. I like having that around. We just need to find a way to again with. With all the congestion, I think we're going to be able to get guys playing time, right, in, in the striker position. And then Husto Demov had a hat trick in a, I think it was the Winster Senior Cup, like, semifinal, something like that. He's quite good. He's quite good. Still uncapped. I'm just saying, the longer they wait, they've only got to wait another five years and we can call him up. <laughs> Don't think it's going to happen. I can't remember if I ever showed you this. Hayes Ward's dropped a rotation contract of 1.8K. Again, we're gonna. He's our. He, he is the the next in line. When when we when we're only playing one striker, he and Tony switch off. Um, but if we go to two striker, that's when these other guys can kind of get in the mix. So that's kind of what's going on with the squad. Let me show you the club. Is the facilities still adequate training facilities? Adequate youth facilities. Those are currently under construction, being I think done in July. Well established youth recruitment. I thought it said something else, so maybe that's already increased. I'm not sure, but we got excellent junior coaching, so I'm excited to see what happens in the uh, the next youth intake, which is the, towards the end of next uh, end of this season, I should say. This is interesting that this has been added. So it's like okay, so we're waiting on planning permission. So I'm assuming that's like going and getting your permits and finding a location and stuff like that. But like just the fact that that's on there. Makes me feel a little bit better, but I still don't trust it because of because of this big red thing where it's like, oh yeah, we you know they could easily just I feel like come back and say, oh uh, you know like we couldn't find anybody or we couldn't find a spot or whatever. I just realized we had two scout openings. Thanks for the I wish it would alert you. Hey, by the way, you can hire more. Um, maybe we ask for an affiliate. Like if we're asking for an affiliate, I'd want it to be. To increase our reputation, maybe let's let's. I, I I don't do a lot of affiliates. We don't want a senior senior affiliate. We want no. I feel like the last time I asked for an affiliate affiliate, we got like a like uh, some university, and then it wasn't like we could loan them, but the league wasn't loaded and it didn't didn't make it work it worth it. Um. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. Let me know in the comments if 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 you have thoughts on senior affiliate. Like, is there a way to do a senior affiliate that's kind of like... I, I, we don't need to loan... I guess I don't feel like it. Loan players from the Premier League or anything like that. I'm not looking to do that. I'm trying to build up the club. But is there a way to, like, make it mutually beneficial where it's like a marketing thing or whatever? Um, or should I just try for the regular affiliate and see what it... Like, could we get one not in Ireland in a league that's loaded, right? I, I'll take this. I'll take Sterling Albion's right. Like let's, let's have an affiliate thing with Sterling Albion. Um, let's just look. All their league one. Yes. yes. Come on, Beanos. Look at that. Ooh, that is a bad stretch, but this is a, this is a better stretch. Almost second. So close. Um, so maybe, maybe we try. So I don't, I don't think you can request. Maybe you can a specific club. Um, 
Okay. Um, f from a next episode standpoint, I'm not going to show you the large start. We're going to play friendly against them. Just see who's in the squad. I might, like, if something really interesting happens, pop in like I've done before. We got Austria and the Faroe Islands, my friends. We need to get off to a cracking start because Croatia... Oh, they played them. Did they play them first? Yes, they only have one. That's weird. They didn't. They've not set up any friendlies. Is it? Do I have the league loaded? I don't remember. But that's a bit, a tad bit odd. Um, so we can we can go top of the table, but they'd have a game in hand. But you know, but then we play them next. So like we can kind of put the pressure on them. If we win our first two games, and they win their, so we we'd be three points clear. But then the next game is against us, and if we could not lose that game, we would have the lead. And put all the pressure on them to keep up with us. And then you can tell towards the end of the year. Again, I'm not trying to discount Austria, but just based off the rankings, Croatia's 15th. So, so yes. So, that's why in this window against Austria and uh, Faroe Islands, I've gone with the 4-3-1-2. I, 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 I'm honestly a little befuddled because I the, the last go-round, I love the when it reminds you again about the text that you just saw, but you didn't click on it. Thank you. Um... You know, in the Nations League, the 4-4-2 with the inside four rather than a winger in the four really didn't work. So I'm like, uh, how do we get our best players on it? And I I want to, since he's playing now, that was my big beef. Like, dude, you got to go play. Granted, it's in League One, but I think he's, he's good. He's got five goals and 12 caps. I think you can't discount that. So we'll try playing with the one. Maybe we'll play a 4-2-3-1, but I, I like the 4-3-1-2 if we can make it work. Um, I've called up master we, lots of center backs, probably too many center backs, but we do have three games. That's my justification. Um, none of them are first, first time caps. McGuire, Will Shaw, Dean Doyle with Frank. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Oh, I meant to call up another left back or I haven't done it yet. Yes, we can solve that problem. But then I'm left going like, who do I do? I feel like it's valuable to have a guy who can also play left back. So it comes down to like one of these two guys having to be dropped. And I don't know who I want to do that to. Like from a national team report, I guess he's better than Collins, but he doesn't enjoy a big match. What, how does Collins feel about a big match? Also does not enjoy a big match. Edrich is fifth. You'd say, Hey, well then you should drop Edrich. But again, he provides cover on the left. So I, I get it's like we are one, two, three, four, four. We're gonna have five players. Okay, so I'm gonna remember after I get done recording to go add a left back. Um, that's the problem, though, honestly, right? If you go look at our left backs, I'll show that to you. Tom feels 32 and is probably going to get the call up, but is he's starting to drip drop off a little bit. Now he does have eight starts and two subs in the air DVC. Um, but that's the whole, that's like, we're almost at the end of the season. And Kevin O'Connor has a start in Major League Soccer. Now, Major League Soccer just started, so you could argue he's playing. So, but again, he's kind of dropping off too, but he, he's been there. He's kind of, I, I may go with him instead of Tom Field, even though Tom Field might be better, but he's not playing as much. And Kevin O'Connor is still on a first team contract. So let's just go ahead and, and call it now and call him back up. Okay, so that takes care of that. Doyle Hayes is coming off of an injury. He's got a twisted ankle. He got a boo-boo. Martin O'Neill, Howard Rose we've, we've called back up, primarily because he's playing. Um, right. Um, Steven Sutton, that I told you, is in League One. Troy Parrott, they wanted me to actually drop Troy Parrott because he's not playing. He's a backup for um, Tottenham, and he's going to Real Betis. So, but I, I like Troy. So we, we Troy's done good work for us. So we're gonna we're gonna leave him in. Uh, I thought I was they wanted me to bring uh, Tony Byrne. I'm like I can't bring the whole team. This is like honestly how I felt. And Tony I think can still play for the under 21s. So we'd like to help them out there too. Interesting though, we have called up Sam Lane who is 17. So we're we're damaging our under 19 slash under 21s. But he has dual nationality and. I think something in the papers came to me about this guy, and I was like, oh, 
we need to cap tie this guy. And he's playing, granted, in League 2. But, like, we can we can run him out at the end of the Faroe Islands game. Maybe in the second half. Maybe he starts. I don't know. It's the Faroe Islands. Um, and, and cap tie him. And then we've called up Jason with a Y. Mullumby who we, I was completely unaware of. We had to add him to the pool. I can't even remember. I think I found him from the scouting network or something like that. But, like, he's not in... I'm a little surprised he's not rated higher. Like, he got lots of good mentals, some decent for, the for you know, some of the roles. Technicals, can play the deep line playmaker. Played at the under-21 level for us. We've called him up. And then, of course, he gets a twisted ankle three weeks. So, if he's able to come in... Because it's asking me, okay, wait a minute, unavailable for selection, so I can't, I can't call him in. Perfect, we'll go find another one. Tommy Carey, Daniel Thompson, Ida, Doyle, Kevin O'Connor that we just called in. There you go, my friends. I think that's enough rambling. Next episode is going to be right after this in nine days. It's Austria, Faroe Islands. Hopefully, oh, it's 25 minutes of me talking. All right, hit the like button. I'm late for dinner with my family. Bye. See ya.